time now for our monthly chat with Woodlawn Health as well the well-known Brad Rogers has been in already once this week. He's back again with more information. Good morning, sir. Well, I do apologize for that. Uh, you're coming back twice in one week. There's only so much person. people can handle. And uh, well, maybe you got to give them what they want. You got to give the people what they want. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll talk to my publicist. <laughs> uh, well, uh, hello, everybody. Um, hopefully, everybody's keeping cool this week. No, that's a big uh, challenge. You know, from a health care standpoint, we want to make sure you guys are keeping track of that, making sure you're well hydrated, staying indoor during the hot times of the year or the day, and and uh, I really thinking about that. We're going to have temps of 97 degrees by the end of the week yeah. and and uh, heat, heat index indexes of 105 ish. Yeah, crazy. And so boy, we really want you guys to take care of yourself. So just just keep that in mind. We did do the uh, board report uh, or the board meeting yesterday, and um, you know overall for the month of June uh, had a pretty good month. Um, we had a $4,700 operational revenue. So that's, that's, that's not a lot, but it's an operational revenue, meaning yes. it's revenue from what we do inside the walls of Woodlawn Health. Um, our net income for the month was 553,000, and um, year to date, our operational revenue is about 220,000. Um, that's been our goal. We wanna make sure that we're making money within the walls of the hospital to cover the cost of providing the care to the community so that we can continue to grow add money into our infrastructure and, and expand where we can to, to take care of everybody. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Um, what that really means is we're about $4 million above our expected budget um, at this point wow. compared to last year. Well, that's always great. So we've really been working hard over there. The, uh, the, the staff has been doing a phenomenal job taking care of everybody and, and really doing a good job watching, watching that, uh, um, those expenses. Um, June's pretty normally a, a lower month for inpatient, um, and that was no different than June this year. Um, so typically summer months, we see a little bit of a decline in kind of those normal respiratory illnesses and, and things like that. So it's normal for us to have most <coughs> of our business or most of our services in the outpatient areas. And, and that's, again, what happened this June. So we were up in office visits again and, and up in most outpatient revenue. and. I think we talked about this for probably the last two years. Um, we're almost back to where we were. Awesome. We're not quite there. Yeah. But most healthcare companies are saying that uh, at this continued change rate upwards, um, they'll be back to those pre COVID numbers um, coming up here in the next six months to a year. Yeah. So uh, that's a good thing. It's a good thing for the healthcare of the community. We need people to get in for those wellness checks. Um, those, those A1Cs if you're diabetic, um, all of those routine things to make sure we can catch something before it becomes something harder to deal with. So um, that's, that's a good thing. Um, construction. Well, it's what done. What construction? It's done. Yeah. We're in the FCMC building. Fulton County Medical Clinic is now at the Schaefer building. Um, we opened up last week, last Monday, sorry, last Tuesday, Tuesday. and um, we're, we're getting through all the changes of the new location um, you know it's uh, pretty common I think at my house if not everyone's that somebody moves something and you ask four people to figure out where it's at right and so we're working through that yes um, they were in that one location for a long period of time and and got used to where the band-aids were and where the where the different uh -huh. things were and so we're, we're working through all that but um, they're doing a great job um, I want to thank that staff publicly they did what I didn't think could be done in two days. They took a practice that had been in place for 30 years in one location and literally moved it on a Friday and organized it on a Monday to open up on a Tuesday. Crazy. Um, That's they excellent. were working as fast as any human should have to work. So I really appreciate what they did. Uh, so come on out and check that out. We will be having an open house um, and uh, we'll get that out there on our Facebook and, and uh, website soon. Uh, we'll be doing a little open house and uh, I'd love to see everybody come to that. Yeah. Brad, what does that, not, not only, you know, just updating the facility, but what does that do for you guys, uh, you know, as a whole, having everything right, right there on campus? So there's obviously some conveniences for patients, conveniences for providers. Um, 
our primary care providers oftentimes do rounds in the hospital. Right. And so now they can go, go to the hospital, do their rounds, walk across the parking lot, go to clinic. If something comes up in the daytime, or if they just want to go back over and touch right. base with a patient at lunch or right after work, it's so convenient for them. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to really give those patients um, the opportunity to see those docs a little more often and make it a little smoother for them. You know, we don't think about it, I guess, small enough community and, and you know, commute times aren't like Atlanta. Right. But um, <laughs> there is a time that you lose, and it's a minimum of 15 to 30 minutes right. every time you stop working in one location and go to another location. And uh, just the act of packing up, getting in your vehicle and going from one spot to the next, you normally lose 15 minutes yeah. or more. And so if you do that two or three times a day, you know, you've lost 45 minutes to an hour um, that you could have been taking care of one more patient, patient um, you know, getting one more phone call done to a family member um, or walking over and, and seeing, you know, that last patient before you head out for the day. So that's Great. a nice thing. Awesome. For the patients, they now can go right across the parking lot and, and get their labs drawn or get their images done, um, those kinds of things. There's convenience in that. Everything from our supply chain right. to being able to just walk across and pick up uh, a new pack of paper towels or a new pack of uh, gloves, it's right there. Right. Um, so that will be much more efficient awesome. for us. Um, for the hospital as a whole, obviously we now we now own our own facility, and so uh, there's a financial uh, incentive to that um, over the years. Right. Um, boy, it's beautiful, guys. You're gonna have to come check it out when <laughs> yeah, we have the open will. house. Definitely will. Absolutely. What, what uh, you know, as you always have a game plan and you're always looking into the future, is is there any more expansion? Is there any more remodeling that, that, that maybe, you know, might be five, ten years down the road, but is there anything else that you're seeing right now in the in the crystal ball? So my crystal ball is, uh, is uh, probably like most out there in small communities. Uh, we're going to continue to see the transition towards more outpatient based services mm -hmm. and so inpatient will continually change uh, boy we're getting we're getting better and smarter um, about taking care of everything from orthopedic joint replacements and getting them home in one or two days right. uh, you know go back to when I started 20 years ago it was not uncommon at all for a person getting a knee replacement to stay in the hospital a minimum of seven days wow. um, oftentimes more same thing with the hip um, now our, our total knees are leaving in two, three days max, and our hips are leaving in one or two. Wow. Um, and that's pretty much the national standard. Yeah. So I think as that happens, you'll see a transition towards more and more outpatient-based services. Um, you know, the hospitals, uh, 1978, yeah. um, the new building there was up and running. <laughs> and so I know you and I were three or four, Right. Um, but uh, it's probably going to need some updates. And, and we're working through kind of a strategic plan for that over the next five years, actually. Yeah. So great mark on yeah. that. You had that, you had that perfectly <laughs> lined up. So, you know, infrastructure things, roofing, yeah. HVAC, things like that, yeah. we're going to be planning for over the next few years. Gotcha. Um, you know, we did have, obviously, at one point, a plan to do a remodel on the inpatient side, um, and then the world changed. <laughs> and so um, with that, we may revisit that in the next couple of years and just see where we're at. Yeah. Uh, it's all going to be based on the, the community's need. Right. Um, we're seeing hospitals around us shift. Uh, we've seen changes of services and, and uh, reduction of services in, in three or four of the area hospitals. Um, we're trying to stay mobile enough or agile enough to make sure that we keep the services that not only our county here desperately needs, but those fringes. Yeah because it's only 15, 20 minutes to some of those other locations and, and we want to be able to continue to take care of uh, the babies here and, and deliver here and, and we think that's important and desperately needed in yeah. our state. Awesome. You know, uh, our state is uh, um, unfortunately one of the higher mortality rates of infants and uh, uh, mothers yeah. um, in the country. And so that's been on the governor's watch list for the last decade. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Every time you see that service uh, go away, um, you really worry about what that's going to do to those numbers and to those families. So um, we're going to stay mobile, stay agile, 
make sure that we can shift when we need to. Awesome. Um, to keep those uh, services going. Sounds good. Other things going on. Um, just a reminder about new providers. Oh, yes. Um, we hired um, three new providers here in the last few months. Um, one is uh, Kyle Summers. Kyle's a family nurse practitioner, um, a nurse for many years, actually worked at Woodlawn, and <laughs> we say this, she's just coming home. Coming back. Um, she worked at Woodlawn in our emergency department years ago and went on to get her master's degree in uh, family nurse practitioner's uh, degree and license. Um, she'll be working at our occupational medicine department, which will be opening up here in the next couple months at the Rochester uh, Orthopedics um, Department there on the south side of the Schaefer building. Okay. Um, so businesses will have the ability to get things like CDL physicals yeah. and, and pre-employment screens yeah. and drug screens and, and uh, you know, work-related injuries and stuff. They'll be able to get them done right there here in town and the same day or the very next morning. Awesome. So we wanted to have something that was a little more um, directly there for the community businesses. So um, welcome her when you see her. She's been out and about at all the different events and around the uh, fairs and yeah. such. And, and so we'll, we'll have an announcement on an opening date on that coming up soon. Cool. Um, Dr. Anthony Witt. Dr. Anthony Witt is a uh, family medicine physician who also does obstetrics. Um, he will be joining us in mid-September. Um, he is a, a highly enthusiastic young physician who is uh, so excited to join our team. He'll be on the north side or in the new Fulton County Medical Clinic. Oh, okay. Um, there, uh, it worked out, uh, you know, just um, perfectly, I guess, as Dr. Bugno was making his decision to retire and, and, and uh, leave the practice he's going to be joining that practice there in his uh, place so cool. um, we'll look forward to seeing him in september and then uh, dr uh, amazona amadi who is a family practice physician who does obstetrics as well um, and is also uh, c-section certified cool. uh, will be joining woodlawn medical professionals there in the second floor of the professional building um, in the family practice area in mid-october um, seems so, a long ways away but it's not uh, it's, it's not even, uh, it's, a, it's tomorrow to yeah, me. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of things that have to happen for providers to start. Right. And the, uh, the amount of paperwork and planning that goes into that um, takes months. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I, I look every day at the calendar thinking, do I have enough time? <laughs> um, but they'll be up and running, and, and I think the community is going to really like them. Um, they're relatively uh, local. They're just coming from uh, Marshall County. Okay. So they'll be within that 20, 30 minute drive for work. And, and so uh, we're looking forward to them and supporting that community uh, uh, need as well. Awesome. So, awesome. Uh, obstetrics department. Yes. We are 14 deliveries as of the end of June, higher than we've been in the last several years. <laughs> um, so uh, Keeping them hopping. they are been very busy and, and uh, we're seeing a lot of migration in from other counties, so uh, we thank you for uh, giving us the chance to take care of you and your families, and uh, boy, we're glad we're here to do that. Yeah. Um, so that department has seen a big boom, and, and with that, our director there wanted me to make sure that uh, we let everybody know there's a lot of classes for families, uh, expecting parents, new mothers, that Woodlawn uh, OB department teaches. And so you can reach out to the OB department and, and uh, get online and check out those classes. And we'd love to have you come to those classes and uh, we're there to help you. Um, and then the other thing we're, the um, OB department is doing is supporting on August 4th at 2 p.m. Uh, the World Breastfeeding um, Week event. And so you can reach out or get online and um, find information on that as well. Yeah. And um, the OB department's there for those needs as well. Awesome. And like you said, those are some of the changes uh, surrounding hospitals are making, not not delivering. And so uh, having 14 more than you were, uh, that, that shows that the, the need is still there and, uh, you know, it's great to have them coming to Woodlawn. Yeah, I think we want to we want to be able to continue to do those services as long as as long as we can. It's yeah. important to us and important to pretty much everybody around us right now as well. <laughs> Um, other quick things, I want to do a shout out to our laboratory department. I think two months ago I talked about how wonderful they did on their national accreditation. And so our director, Emily Scouten, and her team there in the laboratory, they're always thinking of what's that next thing. And so um, past their national accreditation with flying colors, 
They just went one step further and became a sentinel clinical laboratory for biothreat agents. So basically what that means is that they are now nationally recognized and certified to test anything that might come in that's suspicious. Ah. So it's one more link in that uh, chain, <coughs> not just for our county, but for the entire country, to where there's one more group that if something suspicious happens, they know what to do to contain it, to test for it, and to get that information out to the CDC and all of the other agencies involved. So uh, they just received that last week. So I want to thank cool. them for all their hard work yeah. on that. Um, other things going on. One, um, thank you guys. We had a great last two weeks. Yeah. We were at the Fulton County Fair, the Cass County Fair, the Marshall County Fair, and just before that, the 4th of July Festival in Akron. Oh yeah, and the Miami County Fair. And the Miami County. So it was a great to see everybody at all of those events. Um, it was nice to have so many of our staff members come out and so many of the community members come up and, and say hello. Um, you're going to continue to see us in all of those community events, so thank you guys. Okay. And then um, the only other thing is I want to make sure that you guys get online and, and check out the Facebook page or the Facebook page and our uh, website. It's continually evolving and getting uh, more and more user friendly and uh, uh, we'd love to have you guys check it out and see what's going on at Woodlawn. What is that website? www.woodlawnhospital.org O-R-G, that's the key right there. That's the key. That's the new link. That's the new <laughs> link, www.woodlawnhospital.org. Brad, thanks for coming in. We'll look forward to seeing you again next month. We'll see you in August. All right, it's Brad Rogers with the Woodlawn Health Report here on the Giant FM Morning Show.